What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Real Reefing TV where I discuss my real experiences in the hobby, give you guys real knowledge that you can use on your tanks. Today we're going to be going over the Master Flex pump and, and how it is powering my calcium reactor, what I have going on with that system and how it's maintaining the calcium and magnesium and alkalinity in my tank. On this channel we go over a new aspect of this reef and suggestions by you guys are what uh, are what feeds the topics each and every week last week we went over uh, the skimmer and filtration from Thomas DX um, and this week we're going over the master flex uh, peristaltic pump and the calcium reactor by recommendation of JJ Reef. So I appreciate all of your suggestions and definitely keep them coming. Drop them in the comments below. Um, and also if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do so. Again, a lot of great content coming out each and every week. That's It's all for you guys. Um, it is all to, to build a community. Let me first start by saying that the calcium reactor is something that I wanted to put on this system because I know I have a heavy demand for calcium and alkalinity in my tank. Um, you know, I would go through about a gallon of uh, calcium and, my, and alkalinity um, solution in in about you know two weeks, a month. Um, you know, so somewhere in between there, it kind of crept up gradually up to two weeks and um, on my 200 and you know everything was the same you know keeping all of the um, you know all of the snails and all of the corals in my tank everything's still the same so the calcium uptake and the and the alkalinity uptake is still the same and so i knew i needed something to do that and, and replace those elements um, that you know was just a little bit more sustainable and easy to manage and also Again, consistent theme is consistency is key when um, when maintaining a reef aquarium, right? And for your corals and everything to, to really flourish. So the calcium reactor does that. It consistently on a daily basis drips in the same amount of effluent from the reactor and, and provides that calcium and alkalinity. And, and I just love how, you know, natural and just full circle the calcium reactor is you know it takes these corals that were out in the ocean that are now dead um, just by you know fish breaking them off and things like that they fall they die right and they're going and harvesting those and then we get to put that in a chamber and melt that down and put that into our tank so I just think that that's the coolest thing saying all that to say this when your water goes through the calcium reactor, it needs to go through at a very stable rate because you also have your, your CO2 going in at a very, very stable rate. And you need to have those two be equal to each other. You can't have one outpacing the other or your, your CO2 is gonna go too high and melt all, your, uh, melt all your media and you'll end up with a big sludge um, of uh, calcium carbonate in there and it'll clog everything up or you won't end up with any CO2 or enough CO2 in there your water will just blast through the system and you really won't have melted any of the media inside of there um, and you'll just be wasting a lot of CO2 so it's important to get both of them very very consistent so there's a couple of things that really help me do that so the first thing that helps me do that is this right here. This is the carbon doser. The carbon doser is an electronic solenoid, um, or yeah, yeah, an electronic um, CO2 solenoid and regulator that opens and closes the solenoid at very, very small and precise increments to let the, to let the CO2 through that solenoid and regulator and into my um, and into my reaction chamber, 
and then actually you can you know make the bubbles larger or smaller and you can also dial it to however many seconds um, per bubble or bubble per seconds that you want um, so I'll show you a little bit of my kind of settings right now and then shot down through the tube here that goes all the way down to the bottom and then back up now in the calcium reactor I also have a pH probe and that's right here that pH probe tells me exactly what the pH of the chamber is so that way I can shut on and off that regulator um, so that it stops putting CO2 in if the CO2 gets too low and turn it on if the CO2 or the pH gets too uh, high to turn on the count to turn on the CO2 regulator so that it can lower the pH back down now what I've got this thing dialed in at is to, to keep the pH at a specific level um, mine I I tend to run it at around um, anywhere from 6.5 um, to 6.55 um, and, uh, and, and so it just kind of fluctuates right in there and, um, and I'm happy with that. I seem to be you know, keeping my calcium at around 550, my alkalinity at around 7, um, which is fine. A low alkalinity is perfectly okay, so as long as everything's happy. Again, it's not a number that we're chasing it's your um, consistency that we're really trying to chase here. Now here is the Master Flex uh, peristaltic pump that I purchased. I actually got a really great deal on this guy. Um, it's got a double head, I didn't necessarily need that, but you know what I did was I just waited and waited and waited and watched on eBay for a peristaltic pump. Anyways, this thing, this Master Flex pump, also Cole Palmer, is another name you can look it up by. Um, but it's a peristaltic pump and these are meant to run 24, 7, 365. And it's got a slight hum to it, but it's not too much. Like if I shut the cabinets, you can't hear it, which is awesome. And, and it doesn't get super hot. It's nice and cool. Um, because it's got a big motor in there that's just, just churning all day long consistently and printing out a consistent drip. Now, it's a consistent drip in the fact that it, um, if you put a cup under it and, and collected the water in one minute, it would be the exact same the next minute. But it isn't um, a consistent drip, 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 drip. It's a little bit faster, then it slows down. It's a little bit faster, then it slows down. And that's because of the way my calcium reactor is set up. So if you have one of these Coralia um, or Coralin, I don't know why I said Coralia, uh, Coralin um, calcium reactors, that's just the way they work. Um, it's, uh, it's a mystery, or maybe it's not to you, but it is to me as to why it does that, but it does it, um, and it's, uh, so it's no fact. Anyways, I like it because it's just an on-off switch and I can just dial it to what I need. Now, I did have a little bit of an issue um, the other day, I bumped it. Um, when I was actually filming, if you go back and, uh, and watch the Refugium video up here, um, you'll actually see I accidentally bumped it when I was, um, you know, kind of fiddling with stuff. And so, um, yeah, so then, you know, you have to kind of go back and try to fine tune it again, which kind of stinks, but if you don't touch it, it's perfectly fine and it will run all the time. Um, now, this peristaltic pump um, this master flex is not this master flex is not plumbed straight from the return pump um, I, I don't want to put force on it I want to let it draw um, as it needs water and as it uh, as those rollers turn inside of the peristaltic pump so inside of this head here it is run by a drive shaft from a pump or from a motor in here and that drive shaft rolls stainless steel rollers in here that then roll against this tubing, which is um, it's a specific tubing specifically for these pumps, and um, and it rolls a specific amount of water out each and every revolution, and so that's how it can keep it so consistent. Um, and so I picked up some of these um, from U.S. Plastic, and um, they are basically some hose barbs with a um, female fitting to a uh, male fitting quarter inch um, 
quarter inch John Guest push connect fitting that then I can put my RO tubing on. Okay, so right here, so right here is where the water comes in and I have it coming in the very first stage of my sump. And the reason for that is that I don't necessarily want the water recirculating back in through the calcium reactor. And so the water comes in through this blue line here, goes through the needle valve, which is completely open. Um, it's not functional at this point in time. I mean, it can work if I wanted to throttle it down, but I don't. And so that goes into the calcium reactor. So straight from there into the calcium reactor and it's being pulled from the outlet that comes around, you can't see it, but it comes around on the backside of the, this uh, peristaltic pump here and gets pumped through here. Rollers roll this direction and, and then out. This line here um, runs all the way back around and down and there is the drip. So you can see it runs quick and then it slows down and then it runs quick and then it slows down. So everything in this is running precisely, exactly the same. The, the carbon doser over here, the regulator and solenoid, is pumping out exactly the same amount of CO2 every second, which is then in turn going into the calcium reactor. The peristaltic pump is pumping the exact, and pulling, I should say, the exact amount of water through the calcium reactor every minute. And so everything is super stable, which allows you to really control the amount of calcium and alkalinity that is being put back into your tank. But guys, basically, I would highly recommend a calcium reactor if you have a high demand for calcium and alkalinity. Um, it is an investment, and I'll tell you right up front, you're looking at at least spending $600 to $800 to really get a calcium reactor set up right. And I would highly recommend a peristaltic pump. Don't try with all the, with all the valves and stuff like that and get a good one. Um, you know, this is an economy drive. So it's a good one, but it's not a high-end good one. It's just a very reliable, consistent one. So look for something like that. Um, and then get a good calcium reactor that has the ability to put a uh, pH probe in it because you'll want to be able to control the solenoid and um, regulator that's uh, putting the CO2 in your, um, from the CO2 tank into your calcium reactor. Get that carbon doser. That's like 250 bucks. You can probably pick up a used one on uh, Reef Central or Reef to Reef or eBay um, for you know 100 bucks, 150 bucks, something like that. And then the calcium reactor itself, you're probably looking at a couple hundred bucks at least. I think I paid 300 for mine and mine came in, I bought it used and it came with the reactor, a about three gallons, so it was a five gallon bucket, but there was only about three gallons worth of the, uh, the media left in it, which is a lot. I shouldn't say only, I mean, that's like a lot. Um, you know, that's probably the next two years, three years worth of calcium uh, reactor media or, you know, dead coral skeletons and a 20 pound CO2 tank. It did not come with the regulator and it did not come with the, uh, uh, the peristaltic pump. So I would say all in um, 400, 300. Um, so I'm sitting at $700 for the calcium reactor setup that I have. But you know what? Totally worth it. I don't have to worry about dosing calcium and alkalinity. Um, I don't have to fiddle around with it or anything like that. I can set it and forget it. That 20 pound CO2 tank will last a long time. That media will last a long time. And so will the reactor. Um, so in conclusion, if you need one, make sure you need one first, but if you need one, definitely would recommend going the calcium reactor route. And look guys, I appreciate um, the time that you've spent watching this video. Um, if you liked it, give it a huge thumbs up. I know I'd really appreciate it. And in the comments below, tell me what you'd like to see next and maybe some comments on what you think about this calcium reactor setup, maybe how you have your setup and your favorite way to do it. Tell me about your favorite media too. I know I have this media, but I'd like to hear what you guys have. 
And, um, and as always, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Hit that big subscribe button and check out the, um, all the other videos. Every Friday, there's a new video coming out, so stay tuned. Stay salty, keep it real, peace.